you might be out on an outdoor adventure and something might go wrong. Hopefully not, but it's always helpful to have some form of communication. And recently we're lucky enough to have locator beacons. Sam, tell us how a locator beacon works. You've got several different types here. Yeah, so uh, this is a personal locator beacon. It's used for people tramping uh, up in the hills, anything uh, like that. We also have an ELT, um, which is used on aircraft, and an EPIRB, which is used on ships and boats. They've all got slightly different reasons for that. So once you uh, activate your PLB or one of the other ones, a um, uh, signal is sent up to the satellite. Um, the satellite then uh, sends that back to Taupo in our systems, and then it sends it over to Australia. Australia will send that back to Wellington at the RCC and we'll start coordinating a rescue. We'll then look for the nearest helicopter uh, to the distress location. We'll send them and they'll hopefully go pick the people up if everything's all right. And they'll inform us of the outcome with communications and the helicopter will go back and uh, drop the people at a hospital or the nearest safe location depending on the uh, situation. Amazing and it's really cool to think that those signals can travel so quickly so the signals you're talking about only take a few minutes. So give us an example of a, a rescue and how you would coordinate that. Yeah so um, here's a position, it's um, just out of Christchurch I guess. Uh, this is one rescue that we did a few weeks ago. So this is a position that the PLB uh, gave us, it's a GPS position. Um, and from this we assume that they were at the dock hut that's just there. Um, as you can see there's always a bit of inaccuracies with these GPS's. Um, we can turn on the topo maps to uh, see where they are. So they're at Crow Hut on the Crow Valley track. Um, and then we can uh, see with Google Earth we can look at the terrain that we're asking the helicopters to fly in. So you can see it's quite uh, mountainous areas. There's a glacier up there. Uh, and then we'd look at where the nearest uh, best resource is, so the nearest helicopter probably, or a Landsar team if the helicopter can't get in, um, and they can go and walk in and um, rescue the people. Great, so lots to consider in coordinating that rescue, and it might not be something that you can do immediately. What would mean that you couldn't go and rescue the, those people straight away? Yeah, so the biggest um, challenge in time is the weather. So if the weather conditions are bad, there's uh, low cloud or there's strong winds, um, the helicopter can't fly into that location. Uh, so then we have to look at another kind of response, uh, like a Landsar team, or we have to uh, wait for the weather to clear um, so the helicopter can fly in. Um, and another challenge that the helicopters have is trying to find the people in the terrain. So if you can imagine uh, a little tiny person up here, it's really hard to spot for the helicopter. Um, so it's quite a skill for them to be able to see the people. Indeed. And if someone is out there and needing rescued, what would you like them to do that would make your job easier? Yeah, so once they've uh, activated their PLB, um, it's best that they stay still so that we have the position information and we're working on the rescue at that position. Um, also best to go into a clearing so that the, the signal from the PLB can go up to the satellites easily and also so the helicopters can spot you easily. So if you can uh, be waving something that's brightly coloured or anything like that, then it will help the helicopter people find you. Yeah, and lead to a successful rescue. Hey, thanks Sam. Really interesting to hear how that works. Kia ora. Thank you.